unlike many in social media, uh, I actually look at the comments. I look at the comments of what people say and the purpose of this product, the purpose of this channel, the purpose of this platform is to give people what they want to hear, not what we want to talk about. And with that, I, I've noticed a lot of like reaction videos to like a Dave Ramsey or these higher influences, Robert Kiyosaki, the Grant Cardone's, and people always mention this is for the people that make a lot of money. Their, their process is for people that make a lot of money. So for the world is out there, the audience out there, we hear you. So today we're going to tone it down. So we're focused on the actual group that we're looking for. The group that we're looking for is the people that, you know, just the mom and pop every ordinary day person, the person that, you know, working a nine to five, you know, making 15 to $25 an hour and trying to get their head above water to find that the fine financial success. And today we're going to talk about people that's making $50,000 or less, how you can still achieve that goal of financial freedom. And we're not going to talk about, you know, all the great sexy things that's out there in social media that you can do. I mean, maybe one or two, but these are simple, easy concepts that you can do to add income to your life. But with all that being said, Alex, let's start it off. And the first thing I want to talk to you about is so people understand, I mean, understand where we came from and things like that people understand when i left the military the only job i can get paid me 950 an hour nine dollars 50 cent an hour gas prices was and this is in texas where gas prices are historically low the price for gas was four dollars a gallon my job was over 45 minutes away one way so it took me an hour and a half just to get back and forth from work I was filling up two or three times a week. So technically I was damn near paying to work at this place. And Alex, now I'm going to go to you is how did you start off? Where, when you started your financial journey, what was you making per hour? When I first started, I was making 10, yeah, $10 an hour, $10. So you're making $10 an hour. And so people understand that we're not coming from a place of these high influencers, we're not making money on, you know, YouTube and social media and any avenue like this. We're talking about the tried true things that we've done from our time, me starting at the 950 an hour, Alex, he over there big time making his $10 plus an hour. I wish I could start off like that, but I didn't. <laughs> 950 an hour, guys, that's where it's at. But we want you to understand that even starting off at these, at these levels that you could still reach the level of financial success. Um, I reached financial success and just given the timeline. So I made nine fifty an hour when I was debt free. I was only making eighteen twenty five an hour. So that's that's it. So it wasn't no fifty, sixty, you know, seventy thousand dollars a month type type of deal for me. So with that being said, Ellis, let's deep dive into it. So what's some of the things that you did? You know, making your ten plus an hour to start going striving for that goal of financial freedom home cooked meals bringing entertainment back at home and rooming with other people i think those right. are the keys i think i think the biggest one that people will have a problem with you know that's a, the last one you said rooming with other people they have a problem with me being in the military. I'm used to rooming with other people. Um, but that's a big concept that people have a problem with because this is why. They grow up zero to 18, you know, they living with their mom, dad, or mom, or just dad, brothers and sisters, and they always sharing everything. So people think that adulthood is having your own straight out the gate. Hey, I'm I'm running. I don't need, nobody can tell me what to do. I don't have to listen to nobody. I don't want nobody around me. I can't live with nobody. I mean, me being in the military, I was used to it because every, my days from basic training on, I always had somebody around me. But tell me how living with somebody, you know, helped your financial future and financial endeavors out. So living with them, it was, they were family of my now wife. She was my, you know, girlfriend or before. Um, so 
the food, as far as buying food, we kind of chipped in. We all chipped in for food. It wasn't like they had their food. We had our food. There were things that they preferred to eat that whatever. But what helped out the most was it was we were two couples. It was me and my now wife and her cousin and her cousin's boyfriend. And so it was four of us splitting all the bills. So it was split four ways. So that allowed me to, you know, cut my rent into a quarter, basically, and cut my food costs into a quarter and all of that light bill, everything was cut into just 25% is all I had to pay. So that is what helped me out. So, so roughly, so roughly in a year's time, when this took place, how much did you make in, in a year's time? So in a year at $10 an hour, I was, let's say I was probably making about, and I was selling stuff, you know, I was doing the arbitrage thing, maybe about 35,000. 30. So 35,000 a year. And then how much was your, how much was your cost of living in that time? So my cost of living would have been super cheap. Like I was only paying like 500 a month. So 500 a month. So on a monthly basis, you was making, you make it 30,000 a year. So you make in roughly around 2,500 a month. Some right, that area. right, right. So $500 a month. So now the key is, what did you do? So your cost of living is five hundred dollars a month. You make it twenty five hundred dollars a month, so that's two thousand dollars. What was you doing with the two thousand dollars a month? I know it was taxes and other things involved, but what was you doing with the extra two thousand dollars a month? Yeah, so the extra two thousand, I was saving and I was buying inventory to flip. So that's what that and that inventory flipping was kind of like gave me that extra push to save more money. And I mean, of course, I'm not I'm human. I went out to eat every now and then or whatever. But for the most part, it was, you know, a, a majority of it went to savings and then the other half went to um, buying inventory and such. All right. So with with your with your cost of living being so low and then you got that extra money. How much do you say, I don't, how long was that time frame was you, you know, house hacking or you was living with somebody else? How much would you able to save in that time, money-wise? So it lasted for about, it went from the four of us to three because her cousin's boyfriend had moved out. Um, and then it and then after that, she moved in with him later on. It lasted for about, I would say, even when it was just us three, it was still pretty fair. Like, it was still pretty easy to split the bills in three ways um, and save money. So that lasted for, I would say, about a year and a half. And then after that, it was just the two of us, me and my me and my now wife. Um, but how much? How much was you able to save? Save, yeah, I was able to save in that time. A year and a half about 15 grand about 15 grand all right so 15 grand so now you fast forward it's just you and your wife or you and your girlfriend at the time so what was you able to do with that 15 grand so we used that 15 grand and we used almost 11 of it to buy uh, to put down as a down payment on a house um and the house that we got with their uh, lender, their lender covered closing costs. So we only had to use the down payment. And then, right. and, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, no, and, and the, the part I'm trying to convey here is if people make short-term sacrifices, short-term sacrifices like you, you know, a year and a half, that was gave you the ability to save, you know, $15,000 because you wasn't, you know, going out there, blowing, blowing the, you know, the top off of your budget every month, it gave you the ability so you could put three and a half to 5% down on a house so you can buy a house in the future. And then, so what I'm saying to the people that's in the lower income bracket, understand that taking that short-term sacrifice can go a lot of ways. I mean, find somebody like mine. Maybe, maybe you can't find the, you know, Alex situation of, you know, having a girlfriend at the time and then eventually being a wife. 
but having a girlfriend at the time and then you finding uh you know family members to move in with but you can find people that's of like-minded resources to say hey i want to cut my cost of living down because the cost of housing is extremely high that if we combine our forces together make our life make our living cheaply or cheaper than doing it on your own and then you can save that money and then both of y'all with the saving funds can branch out and do your own thing but the key is that short-term sacrifice that's needed to be made right there i mean for me i i did it a little i lived a little backwards because i was dumb let's call it what it was i was dumb and um i was part of the heartbeat loan era during the financial crisis and then what I had to do, house that I had built, I only been there for three years. I had to say, uh, damn this, I'm just gotta I gotta sell it. So I went from living living with the bougie people in a house that I had built, paying fourteen hundred dollars a month, and then I downsized completely to an apartment that was not in the most favorable side of the uh San Antonio to six hundred dollars a month. But that gap that I got to save, that eight hundred dollars I got to save was enough to start fully funding, fully investing in things. And then I just kept doing that, kept doing that. And then I took jobs other places. But with that short-term sacrifice of downsizing and putting money away, then I start seeing that money can grow. And then I got other jobs. And then fast forward three years later, or four years later, I was able to come to Florida and then I could buy a house that was cost of living it was little to nothing at the time to live in i mean the only thing i had was lights gas phone water groceries insurance that's all i have but th those are the things that need to be talked about more and more is that sacrifice that's the part that um we don't talk about a lot even in the social media space is that that first element to any investment type is that short-term sacrifice at the beginning will take you a long ways moving forward. Alex, you got anything else on this? Yeah, I mean, another thing, too, that helped me out in, you know, my financial journey was not having a car payment. Um, I drove an older car. Not, I mean, it wasn't too old. It was 2007. But I didn't have the need or feel the need to go ahead and upgrade just because I had extra money in my pocket. I was okay with the car I had. It drove wasn't the nicest car, but it got the job done to take me from point A to point B. So not having a car payment and having, you know, being able to room with other people and save on rent. Those were the two biggest payments that I was able to bring down in order to save. And I'm, I'm glad you brought up the house payment. I mean, not the house payment, the car payment. A lot of people for the life of me, I don't get it. They want to go to the car lot and then they want to have a mortgage payment because that's what everybody else that everybody else doing if everybody was smart then it'll be a lot more people with money in the world the key element there was the ability to go buy a car cash it don't matter what the car is people trust me especially when you're when you you know you're making less than fifty thousand dollars a year it don't matter what the car is get something that's just going to get you from point a to point b the reason why i'm saying that because if you're a car enthusiast and you're making less than 50k trust me i got you you're going to be able to afford any car you want to in the future but just get a car to get you from point a to point b point a to point b is to work and back spend most of your time at the house conserving conserve money because that's going to get you your stockpile to buy the car that you want in the future and then so and i'll use my instance so once i i had to go deploy or whatever to pay off the the truck i kept that truck for forever but I didn't sit there and look like, oh, I paid off the truck. I don't have that $500 a month car payment. I got $500 extra to blow. So what I did, I just kept the, I just kept the $500 a month for until perpetuity until I was like, okay, now I'm done with this, this truck. And then even when I was done with the truck, I still didn't drive and I just kept saving, saving, saving. And then I was like, okay, now I can go to the car lot and say, hey, give me this car. Because I still had the cash to do it. But the key element of it is not being quick to go buy cars that they're depreciating assets anyway. And the only thing is going to do the value will go down, maintenance costs, gas costs, uh, upkeep costs, all that. Get an old beater. Go get me. I'm a 
Toyota guy, they last forever. I've seen them in third world countries. In sand dunes, they still ran for years on end with no oil changes. But get something that's just going to get you from point A to point B. And then you just keep driving it to the, to the end till you stack up enough cash to do the next thing. But the first thing should be you either house hacking, going to buy a, a duplex, triplex, fourplex, you live in one unit or whatever, or buying a home. And then it's getting the car. But once you, one thing you'll notice is once you start saving that money and you know how much sacrifice you put into it, the attitude to spend it won't be as easy. And then you will start putting it to more things that will get you to make more money. With all that being said, guys, if you have any comments, let us know down below. Share this video, subscribe, hit the like button, and we will see you guys in the next one.